So let's talk about energy audits. What is it and why should you perform one? So an energy audit is a way to identify the loads of all the things you have aboard your boat, like microwaves, coffee makers, lights, refrigeration. And it is really helpful because it allows you to properly design a electrical system for your boat. You have to understand how much you're using in order to understand how much energy you need to store and how much you have to generate to put back in your batteries each day. So there are two ways to do an energy audit, in my opinion. The first is to look at each appliance's power usage, and then we can assume a duration for that appliance. But the other method we'll go into in a sec, but both of these methods require a battery monitor to measure all of the power that's coming in or out of the battery and the state of charge. So here's the battery monitor in our boat. It's a BMV 712 by Victron, and that just pushes its data to a servo, which is beneath me mounted, to this touch screen. So currently, the inverter is off, so I have no AC loads, which are the high voltage loads. My battery status, I'm at 100% state of charge. I'm currently drawing 22 watts, which is the total power, and that equates to 2.2 amps at the battery's voltage of 13.3 volts. So what's drawing 29 watts right now? I believe the lights are drawing some. So if I turn those off, we see it got a little darker in here. I'm down to about 15 watts. It's a little bit of a vampire draw. I think we have uh, 11 watts now. That's the little bit of background lights on some of my instruments drawing a little bit of power. But that's kind of the baseline right now. I'm drawing 15 watts. So I'm gonna turn the lights back on. So we see lights now, the total loads are at about 30 watts. So I'm, all the lights in the boat are drawing about 15 watts of power. So if I were to try to estimate over a 24 hour cycle, how much that the lights will be drawing out of my batteries, I have to assume a duration. For instance, Let's say I use the lights for 10 hours a day. So 15 watts times 10 hours is 150 watt hours or 0.15 kilowatt hours. So I can go through each device now and see how much it draws. For instance, so my new baseline with the lights on is 29 watts. Let's see the water pump. So if I turn that on, it's going to draw a lot. You're going to hear it running right now. So I'm at about 85 watts, 100 watts, 120 watts. So that, so that, uh, that draws about 70 watts or so for the water pump. Other things like my deck lights, if I turn that on, it goes from 29 watts to 44 watts. And I can continue this here. Certainly my navigation instruments, these are going to draw a fair amount. So I went from the 29 watt base load. Now I'm slowly warming up, passing 70 watts. So I see they're drawing about 50 watts right now. Turn those back off. How about some AC loads? So I'm going to go turn my inverter on, which is going to be busy converting the DC power into AC power to run kind of, I call convenience appliances, things we don't really need, but we like, like microwaves and coffee makers and computer laptop chargers. So we're on now, we're inverting. And what's interesting, so I, I'm drawing 14 watts out of the outlets. Those are my loads. And so I only have, only the, the inverter only powers my outlets aboard. So 14 watts accounts for things like, again, little vampire loads like this temperature sensor, some vampire draw on a TV or a microwave. But that's my kind of new baseline. So let's go turn some other things on and see how much power it draws.
So over here, I have a microwave. I've already put some bowls of water in it. So my baseline load right now, I have 15 watts of power being drawn on my outlets. I'm gonna put this on for a minute. So looking at my loads, I've gone to, looks like it's selling at 1200 watts. It's a lot of power. So, look, so minus the 14 watts initial, I'm drawing 1200. So it's about 1190, 1200 watts. It's quite the load, a lot more you can tell than the lights. You know, that's a significant portion more. But the beauty is you only run the microwave for a couple minutes at a time. Coffee maker, the load, residual at 14 watts. I'm gonna turn the coffee maker on. Now the coffee maker, I'm drawing 605 watts right now. So about 590 watts of load. But again, that's not all that, that's, it's a large amount of instantaneous power, but it's not that cumulative amount of energy. It's actually quite small. If you look, figure that you only are drawing 600 watts for five or 10 minutes a day, that's only a portion, a, a tenth of an hour. It's a very small amount of total energy. So how do you calculate your total draw for the day? I go, I now know the instantaneous load of each item. I kind of assume a time that's gonna be drawn. So this coffee maker draws 600 watts or equivalently 0.6 kilowatts. If I only do it for a tenth of an hour, that's 0.06 kilowatt hours. And if I do that same procedure for each appliance, add up my expected time using each one throughout the day, I have an expected energy usage for my boat for that day. And I should do that kind of at anchor and then at sea so I figure out how using the boat my energy demands might be different. So the other option, which I like a little more, is to let the monitor do the work for me. So this is measuring the total amount of power I've drawn out of my batteries. So if I have the battery monitor installed, if I'm at the dock trying to calculate my power usage, I can just live my life with the, sh the battery chargers off and this monitor is gonna measure the cumulative effect of me using all of my appliances how I think I will, how I actually will use them. So this will actually record my day-to-day -day life power usage aboard the boat. And once I know the loads while at the dock living aboard, which would be very similar to if you're at anchor, I would wanna do the same procedure using the boat because underway I'll have loads like autopilot, radar, navigation lights, other things I'm not typically using at anchor. So it's kind of a different profile of energy usage. So once I have those two values, my actual power usage over a 24 hour day, now I can go in and design a proper power system with adequate energy storage and generation to recharge the batteries. So we've done the math now. We know that you calculated your total energy used over a 24 hour period. Likely, the amount of power that you use underway sailing will be more at anchor than your at anchor loads. So if, for instance, you did this math and you used 2,000 watt hours at anchor or underway, you use 2,500 watt hours Let's use the larger number because you want to make sure you have enough power for worst case scenario. So we used watt hours. You could use amp hours. They're slightly interchangeable because we have a 12 volt system. But given batteries are often rated in amp hours, it's best to go back to amp hours. So let's do that. So 2,500 watt hours, you divide by nominal voltage. Sometimes you can assume 12. With lithium batteries, it's more like 13. Let's be conservative and say 12.9 volts. That means your energy of 2,500 watt hours at 12.9 volts is approximately 193 amp hours. But that is the 
you don't want to have you know all your eggs in one basket and only have enough power for that you want to allow a little bit of room for expansion on your system you're, you're always going to use more power in the future likely you won't be taking loads off your system so you want to little, leave a little room to grow plus it's better for longevity of the battery to use the middle state of charge don't push it all the way full and drain all the way down so let's multiply that needs times an extra 30 percent so that comes out to be 250 amp hours of energy storage you should have in your house battery so when you look at the battery options you can either look for one battery that's big enough for that, but I'd recommend at least two batteries in parallel to make up that capacity that you need. It's important to note that when you convert DC to AC, there are always losses associated with that conversion of electricity. So a thousand watt microwave of AC power will draw more than that out of your batteries, such as 1100 watts out of your batteries. So these calculations, the method I the second method I mentioned, using the actual power that's pulled out of the batteries as recorded from the battery monitor, will capture those inefficiencies. So that's a good way of doing it. So that was a view of battery bank sizing, but that's very simplified. Obviously, every situation is going to differ. You may have lots of solar. If you are a catamaran, you probably will have lots of solar power. Or maybe you have a twin engine vessel and you have a lot of alternator power. Or maybe you're generator heavy. It's going to depend on your situation exactly how big your batteries want to be. Maybe you want to go out at anchor and sit quietly with no solar for three days. Obviously, you have to change those numbers on battery bank sizing. This is kind of the bare minimum. You need to apply it to your own needs. How you primarily want to recharge the batteries and then figure out your exact bank size. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to the team at Battleborn Batteries. And in the meantime, I hope you consider supporting Warrior Sailing.